are these people? Well, good news, everyone. Assange is free. Well, as free as we can be in this capitalist hellscape. But, you know, gets to walk on his two feet, see the sky, that kind of stuff, which is nice. So... Yeah. Of all Indy, the people that... Of all the people that... I'm glad, Indy, you're here. And I I'm, I mentioned this to you uh, earlier. Obviously, I was going to do the story, but I think you... Are probably one of the few people that I know who has watched. You've seen, you basically watched this Assange trial from start to finish, even before, you know, we had INN when we were in Discord. That was the first time I think even one of us were aware of who Assange was. And obviously, for me, you know, getting to come in connection with Misty and her you know, uh, advocacy for Assange, but you have been, and Reef, by association, you two have been um, on it in terms of getting, knowing any itty bitty detail regarding this trial that even in a way that I don't necessarily feel as comfortable talking about. So what better for people to talk about the, this issue than you two? Um, so yeah, I'm glad that you're here to kind of share your your take on this in terms of you know like what happened, but I think kind of moving forward what the implications are you know for journalism in general and us, you know, who are part of independent media. So um well, but yeah, you thank you for being here. You run a Substack. Holy shit. Holy shit! It's been it's been a, it's been a really emotional few days. Um, shit, I'm gonna. I, I didn't even see nothing yet. Okay. Um, <laughs> Get yourself together, bro. Okay, so so we'll we'll just say that that a very close family member of mine was celebrating a birthday on Monday night <clears throat> when this news started to flash across, and I was. To say the least, shocked and distracted to say, wait a minute, is this real? And it was a Washington Post thing that popped up, and all of a sudden I'm I'm on every network and I'm hitting refresh and I'm searching for the people who I know would know what the hell's going on, and I'm not seeing anything yet. And finally I see in my feed Afshin Ratasani, uh, Ratansi, and he's talking, that was before this was even out, okay? This is the video that was put out by, by WikiLeaks. But if you scroll down a little bit, uh, Reef, no. uh, before this even happened, there was a tweet by, by Ashton Ratansi with a video where he's basically, it's like a two minute video where he's saying that I hear that there's a plea deal happening and that he could be freed like as soon as immediately. And we were just like, oh my God. Right. And then like five minutes later, we we get this video from WikiLeaks of him getting on a plane. So that that's the first one I saw. Okay, yeah. and it was a minute and change, something like that. Um, and that he was one of the last people I believe to interview Julian before he got taken. Um, and then we get this this tweet from WikiLeaks about him boarding the flight, and play the video with the the audio. Yeah, you can you can unmute it. Yeah, I mean, I was just letting it roll. It's um. it's the first time we see him and we hear him moving and. We can't believe it's real, you know, and... Well, it'll have a number we don't like. And this was, again, Monday night in U.S. time at 8 o'clock in New York City time. We see this video, and I dropped at 12.30. I, I doubt I put it into an article. I hadn't really seen it again. Very many people publish it in my world. So I yep. grabbed this, and I grabbed a few other elements, like this tweet from WikiLeaks. Which which describes it really well. I'll let you read that one. So Julian Assange is free. He left Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison on the morning of twenty fourth of June after having spent one thousand nine hundred and one days there. He was granted bail by the High Court in London and was released at Stansted Airport during the afternoon where he boarded a plane and departed the UK. This is the result of a global campaign that spanned grassroots organizers, press freedom campaigners, legislators and leaders 
from across the political spectrum all the way to the United Nations. This created the space for a long period of negotiations with the U.S. Department of Justice, leading to a deal that has not been yet been formally finalized. We will provide more information as soon as possible. After more than five years in a two by three meter cell, isolated 23 hours a day, he will soon reunite with his wife, Stella Assange, and their children, who have only known their father from behind bars. WikiLeaks published groundbreaking stories of government corruption and human rights abuses, holding the powerful accountable to their actions. As editor-in-chief, Julian paid severely for these principles and for the people's right to know. As he, results, as he returns to Australia, we thank all who stood by us, fought for us, and remained utterly committed in the fight for his freedom. Julian's freedom is our freedom. More details to follow. So fuck yeah! So that was the first. That was the first tweet that came out. Um, yeah, solitary confinement crab for five years. Okay, since the day he went in there, they basically put him in solitary confinement uh, for twenty three hours a day, and he was out for one hour. I think it was for exercise, but still, he wasn't allowed to go outside during daylight hours because of the nature of his case or whatever they decided to call it so he literally had not seen the sun in five years according to everyone i mean it's so these are the actual court documents and again that's a tweet linked so you can actually bring that up on twitter um, from the article and read and read and read the four pages all right uh these are the actual this is the plea bargain that he ended up signing um, and then and then pleading guilty to the espionage charge. And that was that was the deal that he signed. Yeah. But it wasn't just you know it's yeah. It was not just this. And then look, it wasn't all sunshine and daisies and, and we are so thrilled that he's home, but it came at a at an at a steep price. Um, journalism is now a crime, officially on the books, and that's what these documents well, say. At least handling classified information and publishing it specifically, which is what journalists, which is what journalists do. Yeah. Um, so, good ones. anytime that's ever happened, and I'm sure there's multiple other publications that will have that be a problem. So, again, the rule's still out on whether that precedent affects things. I, I think generally that consensus now is that it definitely does something. We're just not sure yet what that will mean. So, we'll it see. Just, you know, you know... Yeah, it's going to be, this is moving towards, and I watched, I watched Whitney Webb's analysis on AM Wake Up with T-Lev, and she was talking about how, you know, this is really, it's nice, but what we've given up in the last few years, and then the Supreme Court decision that came with it the morning after, that there is assault on activity, assault on investigative on exposing the crimes of the powerful and the fact that they can now go after and criminalize someone for reporting on that and exposing that and now that is precedent that guilty plea and all yeah, look so I don't blame him at all not one Joe Lorium go ahead um, put up this like the day of right June 24th a day that will live in infamy, I'm sure. Um, so, WikiLeaks publisher left Belmarsh Prison on Monday morning and departed the UK headed to Australia, right? So, agreed to a plea deal with the United States. He left Belmarsh on Monday and he headed to Australia. He was granted bail by the High Court in London and was released at Stansted Airport during the afternoon where he boarded a plane and departed the UK, WikiLeaks said in a tweet early Tuesday morning, London time. Stella Assange tweeted, Julian is yeah. free. Words cannot express our immense gratitude to you. We, uh, yes, you, who have all mobilized for years and years to make this come true. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, 
Assange was released as a result of a plea deal with the United States, the BBC reported. Uh, according to CBS, the BBC's U.S. partner, Assange, will spend no time in U.S. custody and will receive credit for the time spent. Assange will return to Australia, according to a letter from the Justice Department. The deal, which will see him plead guilty to one charge, is expected to be finalized in court in the Northern Mariana Islands. Uh, New York Times which reported is weird. that. Assange, yeah, which is yeah. Uh, New York Times reported that Assange agreed to the one count of the Espionage Act conspiracy to disseminate national defense information in exchange for a five-year sentence, which the U.S. agreed and had already been served on remand in Belmarsh. So, WikiLeaks released a video of Assange walking on the plane, which you saw a minute ago. Um, Sydney Morning Herald reported a court filing outlines a single criminal court count of conspiring to obtain and disclose classified U.S. national defense documents. The newspaper said Assange pleaded guilty to an espionage act charge of unlawfully obtain and disseminate classified national defense information. Bruce, this is the bit I wanted to get to. Bruce Afrin, a U.S. constitutional lawyer, and Majorie Cohn, former president of the U.S. National Lawyers Guild, both told Consortium News that a plea deal does not create a legal precedent. Therefore, Assange's deal would not jeopardize journalists in the future of being prosecuted for accepting and publish publishing classified information from a source because of Assange agreeing to such a charge. Afrin said, a plea is not precedent. Precedent consists of a decision interpreting a matter of law by an appeals court that will govern future cases on the same legal principle. In contrast, a plea is merely a factual agreement by a given defendant that they did a certain act, but does not bind future defendants in similar cases. For example, if Julian chose to drop his First Amendment defenses and plead guilty, this does not mean that a similar defendant in the future does not have a First Amendment defense in an Espionage Act case. No appeals court has decided such issues, and Julian's plea does not bind future courts or future parties, nor will it ever be considered in any other defendant's case. There is a doctrine that a person is bound to a factual decision, including a plea, only if they participate in that case. This means that no future defendant will ever be impacted legally, either by fact or law, as a result of Julian's guilty plea, it has no precedental value or effect. So, take that what you will. Um, you know, I'm sure. I'm be... sure the CIA, the State Department, the National Security Agency, the Department of Homeland Security, and others would probably see that differently. But yeah, I'm just guessing. Well, essentially, they're saying it still has to be argued whether your First Amendment rights are affected there, but. The fact that he was charged with, you know, classified information stuff, you know, clearly Espionage Act needs to be removed, re, you know, so, but hmm. we'll continue a bit. The Mariana Islands are a U.S. territory where Assange will complete the deal in a U.S. federal court on Wednesday. Technically, he's coming to the U.S., but not to the district where he was indicted. Um, and he could be taken into custody, but we assume the U.S. will act in good faith. This is what I was worried about. Don't assume the U.S. will do anything in fucking good faith. That's bad. Right. Um, <laughs> so, but that was me. So, um, Iador Martinez, a lawyer for Assange, released the charges that Assange apparently pled guilty. He wrote, Julian Assange has agreed to a deal with the DOJ, so he's finally free. Right? And here's that documentation. Um... Again, to receive and obtain documents, writing, and notes connected with the national defense. Right? So, and he conspired with Chelsea Manning to do so, which is what he pretty much pled guilty to. So, um, any questions? Um, no, nope. plenty, of it. but oh. why now? Wasn't this what was offered before? Um... Well, and I think it was the only thing was Those he my had to come two. to the U.S. to do that. So, right? Well, why, why he turned that the, down. Who the hell came up with? Who came up with the idea of the Northern Mariana Island? Genius, whoever did. Who yeah. decided that 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 like where that where that come from? Who pulled that out of there? They're brilliant, but yeah, man. Um, and there was a lot of nerves and worry that once he got onto U.S. soil, that. Was he technically going to be remanded, arrested? He got yeah. in front of a judge. 
what the conversation that he had or when he was allowed to speak, what he said, of course, was profound. And, it, and it's still the only thing so far that we, we've really heard or seen out of him so far, but that's a whole other thing we'll get to. Yeah. Um, Misty did a stream that day, which I was watching and with you should a lot have been watching too. So a lot of tears. It's on and Rumble. So if you go to the Rumble channel, it's on the Bitch channel. It's on Action for Assange. Yeah, they got to take a victory lap. You know, all the activists and Sleepy Josh and yep. Andrew, Kendra, and, and Eric was in chat. Kelly, and Glory. I mean, I was in chat. I was in chat most of the night. Um, Halo, whatever I could be. It was Andrew. Paul. Paula came in, I think, for a little bit. It was Daniel Decinter. You know? Yeah, Decinter. Um, yes. Decinter. One of the few who I need to, yeah. you know, connect with more. So, um, but yeah, good peeps over there. Been doing it forever. So, then you had Richard mm -hmm. Medhurst. He weighed in. Can't believe Julian is free. I covered his case for four years. Listened to the U.S. criminalized journalism. While the media did nothing, Julian is a freedom fighter whose sin was humanizing the U.S. victims. So, yep, and 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 he is responsible for literally bringing Colin and I together. Yeah. Um, if it were not for Richard Medhurst streaming in 2020, we both would never have joined Discord. We both would never have befriended Mona Carmona, and we both wouldn't be sitting here right now. And I had to. Thank him for that. And, you know, a crab dance every day for a fucking year for this man, because that guy literally in September 2020, every day was at the old Bailey courthouse yeah. and was running from the courthouse to the hotel so that he could dump his mind down as fresh as possible. After live tweeting the entire fucking thing, he basically committed it to his memory like like a photographic memory type of shit and was able to amazingly with incredible detail recite what the hell had happened in the show in the, in the courtroom. And yeah, he did this I've for like 11 or 12 days straight. And he covered the most incredible testimony I've ever heard. Go back and watch his coverage. It says Gostola did it too. There were others, but I thought the way Richard covered it was just phenomenal. Um, yeah. And I, have to, I have to say, yeah, but I have to give a shout out to Richard because yeah. he was the one that taught me about Sanj and why I should care. And how what was happening to Assange, it, now granted, we I wasn't even in doing this. We weren't in independent media at the time, but at least in thinking in terms of Richie and what he was doing, you know, how that was applicable to him. But I think in terms of the idea of thinking of press as adversarial in terms of, you know, getting the information and kind of getting the truth out there so that people are able to make decisions based on the truth. And the fact, of course, that we know that this country, well, this world hides the truth often um, to keep, keep the elites in power and to break us down in the process. But the idea that, and I keep saying this, the fact that Assange's story is not talked about enough, at, well, not enough at all in mainstream media, I think that kind of goes to show how dishonest and how bought our media is. And so the idea that Richie was able to kind of teach me that, and by association, Indy, that, at a time when I don't think people were really as no knowledgeable at Assange at the time, um, I think is very, very special. But yeah, just I think in a lot of ways kind of ended up having us do what we're doing now with the awareness of what we're up against. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, well. I certainly hey, I remember, remember that this. one. Ninety-two. I was. I think didn't I film this live too, or at least push stuff through? I think when this was going live. Um, maybe. 
you know, Which shout one out. Is this? Uh, this is the largest Assange gathering of speakers to protest in the U.S. October eighth, twenty twenty two. So right. Well, this is the follow up to it when you guys interviewed Misty on INN News about the action. Uh, this yep. was in November, at the end of October, early November. Um, that was a gathering of speakers. It was also the launch of the Indie Media Awards. Yep. And um, and Misty and I and Crab and someone who shall not be named because I don't want to be yelled at for smearing them or whatever, all worked our asses off to launch it in conjunction with that global event where there was a human chain formed around Parliament in London, and there was a companion hands-off event in Washington, D.C. that Misty organized with several others, but Misty was the lead organizer that had the largest gathering of speakers, of large-name speakers, on behalf of Assange, I believe, in the entire time that he was arrested, that he was in prison. Um, mm. I think there were 30 speakers, including Sabby Sabs, including oh my god so many um there was a naked guy that showed up wasn't that was the one was it, there was a naked guy and yeah so he yeah. wanted to self immolate himself i try not to mention that one you know um, <laughs> well i was just i was just saying a naked guy i wasn't going to say the rest of it but well but you had to cut away from with, that that was during the kiriaku speech if this for if i remember correctly yes um, what you're showing right now that's ford fisher's coverage of it yep. but uh, then, you know, also wanted to give special mention to our friend Gordon Dimack, um, who has been also given up a ton and follow. He lives in in the London area, so he's been able to to follow it closely as an independent journalist. And he kind of went you know mentally you know everyone has a break and it, and it broke him for a little bit and he just couldn't do this anymore it, it was financially hurting him to do so and mentally it was taking a toll on him what, what happened what happened um don't know I don't but know. i'll fix it i don't um, know but but that was gordon so we we had an hour-long chat with gordon about the Assange case, about what was happening. Um, there was a British commentator who was in in some kind of heat, Gary something, that week. Oh. So we were... That was, that was just an incredible... You know, I've been following him and tweeting with him and to get the chance to kind of talk to him and and listen to his perspective on how long he had been following Julian. I think he'd actually like spoken to him when he was in the embassy. You know, this this goes back many years. There's 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 Gordon. Yep. <laughs> yep. And uh he's he's right now he he had been off of Twitter for a while. He's now back on Twitter temporarily while he's covering Craig Murray's run for parliament. But yeah, that was an hour long stream. I see you have it muted on on there so we can't yep. hear it. Your YouTube is muted, but yes, um, on on you purpose. can see him scratching his ear. <laughs> <laughs> um, endearing and adorable. Um, so so, I wanted to say personally thank you to everyone. Scroll down a little bit who shared, supported, protested, podcasted, and got loud about Julian. He can finally hug his kids. He can finally be free. Lots of questions to be asked, but today we celebrate. And that was kind of how I wanted to finish off day one. I don't want to yeah. start getting yet. I don't want to start asking all the all the questions. There's going to be plenty of time for that. Yeah. So, well, so you know, look, at least let the guy get home and hug his wife and see his kids. We can we can plenty of time for all that stuff. Yesterday, but, Julian arrived in Saipan and went before the, the judge, which is interesting. You know, you put up that tweet. Um, now that's him walking in. The person that we were following, the journalist, was actually had the same last name as the judge. I don't know if anybody confirmed if there was a relation there. Right. I have a feeling that everybody on in the Northern Marianas is half related. 
it's it's awfully small is all i'm saying yeah um, so, i sent you that thread reader for that right um i think so yeah so I believe this was him walking into the court courtroom and this was him walking out of the courtroom as as free yeah uh, i don't have what he said i don't have the tweets of what he had said in the in, in the courthouse um but i do have what caitlin wrote because colin actually quote tweeted and said that she perfectly had encapsulated his sentiment on the entire thing and it's a, a little under five minutes yeah um which i have another caitlin we'll just back and, to back them real quick um so but that's but Tim. We'll do... I think it's Tim. I don't even know if that's her or Tim. I no, only read Tim. it. I didn't listen to no, it. No, it's Tim. It's usually we'll Tim. Do... It's pretty much Tim who always does the voiceovers. Yeah, we'll yeah, do this usually. one first. But... Um... Hell, maybe anything is possible. That's the thing today's. that stands out for me the most when watching the deeply moving footage of Julian Assange arriving home to Australia is how impossible this all felt until it happened. If you've been following this case for a while, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This was the moment you'd dream of in your quiet, private moments, but could never fully allow yourself to believe would actually happen. It was very easy to imagine Assange dying in a prison cell, either in the near future at Belmarsh or further along the timeline in some U.S. hellhole. It was possible to imagine him getting out many years from now, his children fully grown and half his life stolen away from him. It was even possible to imagine him getting out one day on some legal technicality or whatever and living out the rest of his life in a nation that has an oppositional relationship with Washington, like Edward Snowden, maybe. But coming home? To Australia? No chance. And yet... There he is. It happened. It's easy to get so lost in all the emotion and controversy and discussion about the details of Assange's case and his plea bargain that you forget to appreciate the fact that an impossible thing just happened. That this was a historic event which very few of us believed was ever going to occur. Until it did. And I don't know about you, but I personally find all this rather humbling. I never voiced my dark pessimism about the future of Assange's plight publicly, because it's important to push hard for victory even when the odds appear stacked against you, but I honestly did not believe what just happened was going to happen. And I was completely wrong. Which makes me wonder, what else have I been doing that with? What other battles that feel almost futile right now will one day make a fool of me by yielding an unexpected victory? Hell, maybe anything is possible. Maybe what just happened with Assange can happen with any of the other injustices and abuses we see in our world today. Maybe it can happen with Palestine, or with the build-up to war with Russia and China, or with the corruption, opacity, and malfeasance of our own governments or with the empire itself, or with capitalism entirely. Maybe we really do win this thing. Maybe that's not a pipe dream after all. As with the Assange case, it might not happen in the most grand and egoically satisfying way we'd want it to, but what does? This isn't a Hollywood movie. It's real life. Real life doesn't move the way Hollywood conditions us to expect it to. Real life produces anticlimactic victories and mundane miracles, and it moves in ways that the ego cannot anticipate. It's comfortable to be jaded and pessimistic. You feel less vulnerable. You look cooler. You don't have to deal with the emotional work of disappointment. And, admittedly, you are very often proven right. That is until you're not. And maybe that's not the most authentic way to come at this thing. Maybe it's better to throw ourselves into this fight, not just believing we might win, but knowing that we will. 
Maybe all that pessimism and reservedness is holding us back from really swinging for the fences and leaving it all in the ring. And maybe it's based on completely false assumptions about what we're actually capable of anyway. Assange has been freed. Maybe all of humanity can be. Well, Um, you don't miss. Well, she's she's certainly optimistic, and she's she's been in this fight a long time, and and incredibly emotional, obviously, about this, as we all have been. Right. Um, the other one I thought was actually kind of better because it was talking about how it kind of feels a little hollow, which is what Dr. Nick is talking about and why does it feel like there's another shoe that's going to drop. Let me just click this play button then. Um, Yeah, please, please. Oh, I know what happened. Julian Assange is free. As of this writing, he is en route to the Northern Mariana Islands a remote U.S. territory in the Western Pacific, to finalize a plea deal with the U.S. government, which will see him sentenced to time served in Belmarsh Prison. Barring any shady shenanigans from the Empire in the process, he will then return to his home country of Australia a free man. Importantly, according to experts I've seen commenting on this astonishing new development, it doesn't appear that his plea deal will set any new legal precedents that will be harmful to journalists going forward. Joe Luria reports the following for Consortium News. Quote, Bruce Afran, a U.S. constitutional lawyer, told Consortium News that a plea deal does not create a legal precedent. Therefore, Assange's deal would not jeopardize journalists in the future of being prosecuted for accepting and publishing classified information from a source because of Assange's agreeing to such a charge. End quote. I've obviously got a lot of big feels about this, having followed this important case so closely for so long and having put so much work into writing about it. There is so very, very much work to be done in our collective struggle to liberate the world from the talons of the imperial murder machine, but I am overjoyed for Assange and his family, and it feels good to mark a solid win in this fight. None of this undoes the unforgivable evils the Empire inflicted in its persecution of Julian Assange, however, or reverses the worldwide damage that has been done by making a public example of him to show what happens to a journalist who tells inconvenient truths about the world's most powerful government. So while Assange may be free, we cannot rightly say that justice has been done. Justice would look like Assange being granted a full and unconditional pardon and receiving millions of dollars in compensation from the U.S. government for the torment they put him through by his imprisonment in Belmarsh beginning in 2019, his de facto imprisonment in the Ecuadorian embassy beginning in 2012, and his jailing and house arrest beginning in 2010. Justice would look like the U.S. making concrete legal and policy changes guaranteeing that Washington could never again use its globe-spanning power and influence to destroy the life of a foreign journalist for reporting inconvenient facts about it and issuing a formal apology to Julian Assange and his family. Justice would look like the arrest and prosecution of the people whose war crimes Assange exposed, and the arrest and prosecution of everyone who helped ruin his life for exposing those crimes. This would include a whole host of government operatives and officials across numerous countries and multiple U.S. presidents. Justice would look like a hero's welcome and a hero's honors from Australia upon his arrival, and a serious revision of Canberra's obsequious relationship with Washington. Justice would look like formal apologies to Assange and his family from the editorial boards of all the mainstream press outlets which manufactured consent for his vicious persecution, including and especially The Guardian, and the complete destruction of the reputations of every unscrupulous prostitute who helped smear him over the years. 
If these things happened, then we could perhaps argue that justice has been served to some extent. As it stands, all we have is the cessation of one single act of depravity by an empire who's only backing off to make room for newer, more important depravities. We all still live under a globe-spanning power structure which has shown the entire world that it will destroy your life if you expose its criminality and then stand back and proudly call this justice. So I personally think I'm just going to take this one small victory in stride with a quick thank you to the heavens and get back to work. There is still so much to do and vanishingly little time to do it. The fight goes on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are a lot more harder questions that are going to have to be asked, um, at some point. But Crab wanted me to mention the the flight. So we find out as he's landing in the Northern Marianas, a post from Stella that this private jet. Um, there the U.S. wants to charge him, and he's got to come up with a hundred and twenty for the wow. private jet. Why he wasn't allowed to fly commercial in the first place, I don't quite understand. Like I get, um, I get from the first one a- when he's in like essentially U.S. custody after the plea deal, right? Like I get that one. Okay, we don't want you to fly commercial because someone might nab you. Right, but then, like, after he's free, you know, commercial flight home, like, be a little little cheaper, but... Well, I think they had rented it for a certain amount of time. Basically, they had the plane chartered for a certain amount of time based to take him to Australia via the Northern Marianas. So, once he got out of the, the trial, and once he pled guilty... And the judge said, you're free to go. He then got back on that plane and flew directly to Canberra, uh, where he landed at 6.30 a.m. Eastern this morning. I don't know what time that that is there, but it was just after dark. It was at the same time at night in Australia, probably. We have that footage there um, further down. But, well, you know, another... Another person that, of course, was instrumental in in our education and in covering this case via independent media is is Fiorella, formerly of the Convo Couch and still from the Convo Couch, but um, right now she's reporting from Moscow for RT. And she says, breaking the latest on Julian's trial, the trial began in the U.S. Federal District Court on the island of Saipan where he pled guilty to a single criminal charge of publishing American military secrets as part of a deal with the U.S. that ensures his freedom. John stated at the trial that his journalistic activities were carried out in accordance with the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which guarantees freedom of speech. Yeah. However, that the Espionage Act that he was charged under is in direct contradiction with the First Amendment, which is profound and brilliant as usual. The judge approved the deal, which partially guilt and release, sentencing him to pro- prison time to serve as part of the deal. After the court hearing, he intends to travel to Australian capital Canberra. The flight uh, the, will take him, will begin on the evening of June 26th, which it did. This is a photo of him just before he exits the courtroom as a free, free man. At the bottom of her tweet. And then, um, man. And then he walks out to the car. Why is it? Hold on. Keep going. Why is it? Whoops. That's the video at then the top. Then he walks out to the car. <clears throat> oh, so, making noise? That's weird. Yeah, it's like every time I unzoom or whatever, it it plays. Oh, it like refreshes the page. Oh, what yeah. a pain in the butt. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is the video of him literally... Stepping off the plane in Canberra. Yeah. So, um, waiting at everybody. Anna Mayers is freaking out over on the rock band, and we're going to get to all the stuff she's talking about. Um, the... I love that he waves. 
I'd love to hear him say something, anything. He had chance several times to address a crowd of reporters, and he didn't. And I understand that he owes us nothing. And I understand that, and I'm being selfish. And all of us are, because we spent this years me. fighting. This little fucking pickup, dude, is so cute. With the little dangly legs, <laughs> like... Kills me, bro. Like, then he just gets to go over there and hug his father. You know. Ugh. Like, I think Shipton was watching this live, and you can literally hear him start crying at this moment. Gabriel. Gabriel? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, it was, um... I was asleep, but I woke up to see this. I knew I was going to see that, and we were going to see a bunch of, or some pictures today, and I just, I wish we heard his voice at some point, and we got to kind of see his mannerisms. Now, there's a lot of questions, and I'll, I'll start to get into them, which is, first of all, this guy had a stroke. This guy's been in solitary confinement. Now, first, he's definitely wearing a bulletproof vest, and you called that, Reef. Well, uh, Andrew but, made some questions about it with the first video. So, right. of him getting um, on a plane. He looks awfully healthy. He looks awfully healthy for a guy that people were going to his prison cell saying a month ago he was on the verge of death and incredibly emaciated. It, it's amazing that he could turn around considering he also has had many strokes and here's Stella's video of, of their reuniting. Um, yep. That's from um, her, her Instagram. Um, speaking of Gabriel, a lot of it feels like a neat little package and bow wrapped up in a lot of ways. And it doesn't give us anything close to what we wanted. That's kind of how I would expect this to work. We were never probably going to get everything that we wanted, which was a full exoneration and dropping of the charges. Um, getting him out, I don't, again, fault him for one second for taking a plea deal at this point. He owes us nothing. He has more yeah, well, than sacrificed enough. Stella did say today uh, that Julian has to recover. That's the priority. Julian will always defend human rights. He will always defend victims. He's always done that, and that's just part of who he is. He's deeply principled and remains deeply principled and unafraid. So, I mean, from what I've heard, he might get back to work, but... Right. You know, you know. There's, there's also, you know, he, he, he wasn't well enough to attend any of his hearings, but yet, you know, he had broken ribs, and he seems awfully well... Considering Which, all of those things. That could have been exaggeration from both sides, too. So, you know. It, like, it could have been, but the court, they he wasn't allowed to attend his own hearing hearings. even remotely in February. In yeah. February. That wasn't long ago. All yeah. right. That was three months ago. Again, months but that ago. could have been a lot of things. You know, I'm secure in, in solitary confinement. You know, I, I I don't know, and and uh, again, I'm I, I'm happy to I couldn't be, I could a picture I never thought I would see. You know, yeah, um, and thrilled, um, but I can't turn my I can't turn my my meter off. Um, well, I think we got time to worry know, about my, that. So we do, we do, but you know, um. A lot of people feel like this is a setup, and that. Well, I think that's also this was getting too powerful in a way, and partially we're all take the teeth out of that cynical, skeptical mm -hmm. bastards who question everything and yes. find it very difficult. Because as Caitlin was saying, that this is the way it's happened, and. Uh, you know, I definitely still have some questions about how this impacts us, but happy he gets to at least sleep in a bed tonight. That might be nice. 
you know? Yeah. So, like, I don't know if you, if you heard that. I think it was, I think it was Kendra who asked me to do some AI on how Julian depicted the way he would sleep in his cell, which was like books and letters piled around him on a yoga mat. You know, like, refrain from using the mattress. And, like, now that, uh, hope, uh, get that man a Tempur-Pedic, something, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna need that. Like, get a good night's rest. You know? But, Misty already talking about Anna what's says, next, right? What? Anna says, Reef, we're smart. Anna says, Reef, we're smart because we question everything. Yeah. And that's, yeah. you know, Ryan Christie on Last American Vagabond literally question everything is, is, is his thing. Also question ourselves, which I know we are tend to do. We can be self-reflective. That is a thing that is possible. Um, yeah. Um, Misty's starting to look at what's next, and she's starting to kind of come out of the, the euphoric ether, which we've all kind of been in to a point. Yeah. And, some people are like, look, is this a distraction from what's going on in Gaza? Is this a distraction? Are they trying to get now? I don't personally know of any person that is now going to vote for Joe Biden because he let Julian Assange go. Yeah. That would no. not have voted for them beforehand. No, he don't didn't think do shit in this. Political move on first that. First of all. People are you saying know? in advance of the debate that that's no. a reason why. But you know what? He held on to this guy for three years and persecuted him. Trump arrested him to wash. Could you even say that? Mm -hmm. You know, people are saying, well, the Democrats are politically, they're not doing this for that. Plus, the deep intel state is not going to allow that unless they have awfully good reason to believe no, that. I think it's more the fact that like, if, they if they continue to do this during the election season, that would have affected them. But all right, let's you know. also let's also address the fact and let's let's not sugarcoat the fact that the Podesta leaks disappeared, that the NC leaks mm -hmm. as part of the deal were removed I'm sure, from WikiLeaks. I'm sure somebody's still got access to some of those, so you know, I'm sure those are around in the ether. But yeah. Like okay. You know, everyone already heard what they had what, what was in them so i hope you know i'm sure there's a thousand youtube channels who covered it hopefully i'm At least sure the ones we talked sure, to but over time over time those will melt and disappear into the ether yeah um click on uh, that on that uh that link there the all of our julian assange related posts yeah the one in the middle of the screen um yeah. Where'd it, where'd it go? Uh, I now see Colin. Okay, yeah, so that's a list of all the posts that, that we've done. How do we miss that? Articles I've written, uh, segments, live streams, anything to do with Julian. And for 30 days leading up to Day X, I was shouting out and spotlighting a lot of the creators, activists, and the journalists that have been showcasing this case, starting from their back. And it was it was titled Free Julian Assange and a date. It started January 18th and continued through the 24th of February. And every day had a different post showcasing this. And I've been sharing some of those, the Substack notes and kind of reflecting. And it's everybody did this. I mean, Stefania Marizzi, thank you for, for showing that there because Stefania stepped, you know, her, she has literally been on every WikiLeaks dump and been researching alongside julian and she's no, told, been relentless in her foia pursuit i told her on twitter that i couldn't talk about this case or assange without mentioning info that she got like mm -hmm. impossible to do so yeah. i mean dozens of and this just goes back to may 2023 when they started to in, implement tags where i could tag all of my posts as Julian Assange related, so you could look at a, at a category list like this, but you could see the extensive coverage that we've done, even when I was aggregating and sharing other people's stuff that had Assange related stuff, um, and how they all ignored Julian at the White House Correspondents Dinner last year, and 
while talking about journalism not being a crime. Fucking gaslighters. And that's, that's, I had to change my Twitter handle. Hashtag journalism is not a crime. I've been saying that and it, and I still feel that way. And we're still fighting for that because they did. I don't care what the, the analysis says there. If they want to criminalize journalism, they're going to. And they just proved it. Right. Yeah. But, um, I definitely also saw that, uh, they did mention that he didn't, there were no victims. Right, that he didn't harm anyone. Um, Correct. That was legally set in stone. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, Je Jesse felt the same way. It was, it was, it didn't feel like it felt like it would. Um, well, there was no, a lot of happiness, but I think it, I think it felt kind of anti-climatic because that's what it was we i think oh, I also people think in our heads we just kind of imagined by design he, like especially with all the trial yes he will get pardoned and it'll be a big yeah. deal and it'll be like it just it just felt sudden to the point where it felt so sudden that people questioned it initially and then it's, you know what it, you like know what it reminds me of days, indy will get this so what? Was that you know you're watching an MMA fight and suddenly the fight's over because of an eye poke, you know, or or something like that. Where it's just like, like oh, oh wait 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 what, wait, what happened? Fight's over? What, what happened? What? Huh? Okay, who uh, you know, right. or some something like that. Someone uh, like some weird uncalled for stoppage. I think it was just unexpected, and it's by design. Like there's, it's unexpected, and I think it. it I think both in for a lot of people's minds, it was going to happen in one or two extremes. It was going to be like either he would be pardoned, it'd be a lot bigger deal, or he died in prison. Deal. This yeah. was just kind of right smack I... in the middle, and and just very oh. unassuming and very like, you know, just just random so you know um when you played before to start the stream you you played before the stream started um conviction winter in belmarsh which is the piece that mm -hmm. that jesse wrote about julian and he said to me and one of the lines says is if his is the only conviction we see and he said that that line kind of jumped out at him when he signed the plea deal yeah, because he was convicted in the end, and and plead, uh, you know. Then he said, "You'll be a, you'll be be a, you'll be guilty, won't be a, uh, uh, an innocent man ever again." Is what the judge said. And he's, I'm sure, he's just like, "I don't give a fuck. Get me out of here." Yeah. So, I mean, by the way, we're yeah, I mean, I think, I think I that mean, that's... we we had to get Missy in here. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, <laughs> she definitely has spilt her gallon of tears the last couple of days, so she's earned that shit. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to try to be optimistic and take this as a win. I I do think it is one. So, uh, you know, look forward to see what comes out of Julian in the next weeks, months, years. Uh you know. So yeah, nice nice bit of news to report on though. Anything else you want to add? Yeah. Well, I mean Anna, I think that Anna that's is saying that they Anna's assessment is that they effectively scared people from investigative journalism. So possible. Tell that to tell to Max Sure. To, to, to a lot of the indie media award honorees that are not going to stop. Tell that to Alan McLeod. Um, they're not going to stop doing investigative journalism, given the, the spite of the risk or because of the risk. They're just going to be um, a lot more careful. About understanding, it. understanding what's at stake and how important it is to get this out there, because there are going to be so many more that are scared off. But there are some that are bold enough 
and are willing to take that risk like Julian Assange did. He sat in Belmarsh prison for all of us and he made that sacrifice because he could have taken a plea deal. I believe that he was offered a plea deal and we've seen this. We know that yeah, he was offered a it. plea deal before Trump before Trump went out. Yeah. He was offered a plea deal I think again last year there was talk of a plea deal and all of a sudden they pulled that off the table. I don't Recently, know if there, there was, was ever another a, one. If so, there was ever a deal where he was where where jail time or where they were not coming here was was on the table. Again, whoever thought of the Northern Marianas gene stroke of genius and and thank you to whoever that was because that I think was the unsung hero in all of this in figuring out how do we get them as close to Australia while still being technically on US soil to be able to plead in front of a US judge either, and end this goddamn thing without ever that, having to come here. It was either that or that nuclear sub that we shared with them. One of the two. So nice. Star Spangled Kangaroo on it? <laughs> that one. That's the one. Um but yeah, no, I like I said, I'm gonna try to take it as a win. And, you know, hopefully that recharges people's batteries for the fights that you know are coming next. So, shit right. ain't over, fam. But. That's for sure. Yep. Indy, you got any links you want to share? You know? Um, well, oh, I, go to, are, go to that planning, one for sure. That's in the description. Were you, uh, were you planning on doing a Assange marathon at some point? Um... We've got a ton of clips to put together for that, so we've know. done that a couple of times already. I may I may do that again at some point and add on to it with with the current stuff and what we've done yeah. or run it all day somewhere two or three hour. No, I, uh, if anything, break it up into shorter segments. I mean, I I don't Whatever. know if anyone really if if it really makes sense to run a full. I mean, I'm okay like with a that. eighteen hour or whatever. We've done so much, dude. I'm okay with documenting that in one place, so whatever, we'll figure yeah. it out, but be on the lookout for something like that, yeah. and, um, you know, talking about these things is why we're demonetized, so, you know, as always, you can go to codashv.com slash IndieDeuce Network or scan that QR code on your screen, links will also be in the description below if you're in that live chat. Real quick, you can go to the exclamation mark donate in the chat and it'll give you a link there. Um, but otherwise, just like and subscribe, share, share the stream, leave a comment. You know, this works by now. Help us get to 3k. We just got to 2k. So appreciate that. We can get to that next, next milestone. So otherwise, thanks for watching.